Welcome back to the Our View podcast. This is the second part of our final episode of season one. New episodes will begin premiering on January 15th, 2021. On this episode, I welcome my guest, Tara Arhakos, a licensed professional counselor and nationally certified counselor, and also Keisha Butler-Thomas, a certified life coach. Join our conversation as we discuss the importance of seeking the help of a professional life coach or counselor, and also some self-care techniques that you and I can do from the comfort of our own homes. So as I was explaining to you, you know, I I have the podcast and I've been focusing uh, primarily on sharing the stories of others, people's um, lives who live with disabilities. That's that all my guests have been sharing their stories. Um, And through that, I found that they, um, we always talked about like support systems and our support systems that have helped us get through, you know, our challenging times of, you know, uh, having surgeries or setbacks from different things uh, and the different challenges that that they have faced uh, with living with disabilities. And it really made me begin to think about about myself and like, how did I get through certain things? And of course the support system and all of that. And then back in 1999, my dad passed away. He had prostate cancer. Um, I was 17. And then um, just not knowing how to deal with that, I, you know, mm-hmm. I went to see a um, a psychologist at that time and was seeing him I, like once a month. And then, um, you know, sometimes it was like twice a month if some really crazy stuff was going on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then like, it, you know, of course it, it backed off a little bit and, uh, you know, and then I was seeing him, you know, once every other month and once every three months and, uh, but it, that went on for, you know, a few years. And I really wanted to, um, you know, highlight uh, mental health and the importance of, uh, you know, seeing a counselor or a life coach or um, just something because sometimes we do need to be, um, you know, we, we sometimes need help in that way and to, to mm-hmm. receive that kind of uh, guidance and assistance. And like to, you know, there's still some kind of stigma attached to um, oh, yeah. you know, mental health and seeing counselors and stuff. And I want to try to help, you know, uh, break that down and, um, you know, help people see that it, you know, it is okay. And especially with the year that we've had here um, in 2020 with COVID-19 and being uh, sheltering in place in most states and just, um, you know, how that affects and impacts uh, one's mental health uh, state mm-hmm. and, um, you know, being, being in, in a lockdown state and all of that. So I really wanted to, um, you know, just address that in, which will be my last episode of the year. Uh, this will be out on uh, December 30th. So I just want to kind of wrap the year up and start the new year off. <laughs> no, uh, it's perfect because I mean, that's the time where the phone starts ringing like crazy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So I, I really wanted to, um, you know, have you on and, and, uh, you know, I've, I've seen all of your, your posts and your videos that you've been doing, uh, you know, through the pandemic and, and just the things that you do. So I, I wanted to have you on as a guest just to, um, you know, to talk a little bit, a little bit about, um, you know, mental health and your job and, uh, what you do and how you are able to, um, to help people. So that's what, <laughs> I'm only laughing because I love that question when people go, so what do you do? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what I do. Like my own therapist laughs at me. She's like, Tara, you really help your clients. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know what I, I was like. I give them a couple corny ideas. I'm like, maybe they do them. Right. And then I was just like, like she just, she actually helped me just accept. She goes, you're like a relational therapist. It's the fact that you have a real relationship with people. And I was like, oh like that's a technique because I thought that's just me right. <laughs> well and that's and that's what it is like when you are just you like something that people relate to that um, right and that was like that the was fact the- that I don't have my shit together makes everybody else more comfortable yes <laughs> because that's the thing like we go 
you know, for me, I was going to, to the therapist because it was just like, I, I felt like I didn't have my shit together. I mean, I was 17 years old, 18 years old. And it was just like, I, like, what do I do? Like, I, I don't right. know what, you know, I don't know where, what this is about. Um, I don't know what these feelings are. And then I went to the, um, the guy and, you know, I, of course, I, I can't tell, I, I would hope he wouldn't lie about something like this, but, you know, he was telling me how his dad died a few years before that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and the same stuff that I was feeling, he was feeling. So I was just like, right. oh, wow. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, okay, I'm yeah. not crazy. Right. It's like, look at that. I, you know, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm feeling okay. And, and just to feel like I wasn't alone in what I was feeling yeah, uh, was absolutely. really, um, you know, really great to, uh, you know, make me feel more calm about uh, what was going on. So, um, so to start the interview, I always ask my guests to introduce themselves to tell some interesting things um, about themselves. And (laughs) I would like for you to introduce yourselves to uh, introduce yourself to our guest and uh, tell them who you are just a little bit. Um, so I am Tara Arhakos, uh, a licensed professional counselor and a nationally certified counselor. Um, and I own and operate Mindful Moments, which is my private practice. Um, outside of counseling, which thanks to the pandemic, I feel like I've done a whole lot of it. Um, I used to go to concerts all the time. Yes. <laughs> So that being this, um, but I am really big on, you know, a mind, body, spirit kind of thing. So through that, I am very physically active um, and just try to stay health conscious, spend time with friends, family, all that good stuff. Uh, Recently started the journey of doing yoga teacher training for my own spiritual needs, whether I ever use it or not for teaching is another story um but other than that I mean that's me in a nutshell (laughs) yes I um I I love that um you know you mentioned the uh loving to go to concerts um you are a uh, Dropkick Murphys fan correct uh I am a ridiculous Dropkick Murphys fan that before (laughs) pandemic was in Paris to see Dropkick with Frank Turner for my birthday. Best birthday ever came <laughs> home to the apocalypse. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. I remember um I volunteer with um their uh of fun. Yeah, with the Colada Fund uh foundation with uh Ken and um I remember you know, you being a, a Dropkick Murphys fan, I'm like, hey, uh, <laughs> like they have I a know. concert coming up. And <laughs> I'm like, Arthur, I already have a ticket. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you there. Can you get me to meet Al Bar? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's, um, I, I definitely miss the uh, concerts as well. Like that was my thing. Like, I, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't buy shoes or clothes or anything like that, but it's, uh, you know, give me a good concert to go to and I'm, I'm there. <laughs> I keep joking. I'm like, I keep putting money aside through this because I'm like, okay, 2021 is the year I travel the world for concerts. So That's like, right. It's the year of go? the concert. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that was my practice for a year and just go. <laughs> right. <laughs> so um, what made you, um, what made you interested in becoming a uh, therapist? Oh gosh. Oh, all right. So the cornball answer goes like this. Um, I was in kindergarten. Yes. This is like a kindergarten story. I was in kindergarten. There's this little boy who nowadays definitely would be diagnosed with ADHD. Um, and he acted out all the time. So like he, the, the teacher would end up yelling. Um, and I didn't like yelling. Like I didn't raise, I wasn't raised in a house where there's a lot of yelling. So I told him every day that he was good, I would draw him a picture. Um, Jokes on him, I'm a really bad artist. (laughs) So I started doing this and like when my mom went to parent teacher conferences, my kindergarten teacher goes, your daughter's doing behavior modification with one of the other kids and giving him a reward every day that he doesn't get in trouble by drawing him a picture. 
I actually <sighs> remember, like, probably one of my first memories is actually his mom coming up to me because we had, like, a little, I don't know, party or something at school. And she just, I remember her saying thank you and giving me a hug. Like, oh, wow. I don't know whatever happened to that kid. He, like, moved out of our district. But I, like, to this day, I still think about him. But, like, growing up then, my mom was like, my daughter's going to be a therapist. And I'm always like, hmm, nature versus nurture? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I steered away from it a couple times. I mean, I wanted to be a wrestling manager at one point. Sometimes I regret not going that route. But oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole other story. <laughs> So, um, but I always went back to, to being a counselor. And I think it just, when I was in college, it really solidified. Um, I lost a friend to bipolar disorder and I had lost a couple friends to suicide already, mm -hmm. but um, that one was really, that was probably one of the toughest ones because it was the first time I understood why he took his life. Um, just because his thought mentality was it was the happiest time he ever had and he didn't want to be sad again so I was like oh and that yeah. kind of just was like yep nope that's where my path is yeah wow that's um yeah and and having learned about you know the bipolar disorder and and what what it means and and how it does impact people like you said you can really you know you have a, a new understanding of it um you know once you you go through the uh you know the courses and and uh you know, learn ab about what it is. And that's really, uh, yeah, that's definitely, yeah. wow. Yeah. That's a, uh, really great story though, that you, <laughs> you know, that you started back in, you know, what's so young Five. and just, yeah, <laughs> not, not knowing what you were doing, really just trying to, you know, calm the situation down a little bit and then just, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how you stuck with it through, uh, through everything. And, um, I also, I, <laughs> Yes, disability and all. I didn't want to be a wrestling manager. I wanted to be a wrestler. Nice. Um, so, <laughs> so, been awesome. Yeah. So we're uh, we're recording this in November. It's my birthday month, and I always like to post um, 1980s wrestlers. You do. Uh, yes. I've to promote <laughs> to promote my birthday, I just posted one right before I I saw, signed on to this Zoom. I can't wait to see. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> So wrestling is my thing, uh, you know, 1980s wrestlers. Absolutely. <laughs> I may have had a slight obsession with Bret Hart back in the day. Yeah. Um, and was slightly devastated when the Rockers broke up. That yes. My parents actually make fun of me that I have like trauma from it because <laughs> I can recall when Shawn Michaels drop kicked Marty Jannetty into the window of the barbershop. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> shouldn't remember that stuff but I do no but you do some <laughs> things you remember like that of course <laughs> oh gosh this is so great this <laughs> but um so so I I think it's it's important um you know to tell that story of how you uh, became interested in psychology and um therapy and and for me I um and you and I we met in uh our college program. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I wanted to become a, a counselor just because growing up with a disability, I felt, I felt like my family would have benefited from counseling with me mm -hmm. having a disability and my older sister not having a disability and just to um, figure out the family dynamics of, you know, what it means for me to have a disability and, and her not mm -hmm. to. And, and how that impacted um, family interactions with, you know, me with my parents, my parents with my sister, my sister with me, and my sister with my parents, and just, um, you know, I, I feel, I, I feel like we would have benefited, and families in general would have, would benefit. So, um, you know, my goal was to uh, become a counselor or therapist um, to deal with, uh, to work with families who uh, are impacted by disabilities. So, uh, although I'm not doing that directly uh, through my job with Jake's Place, I do have interactions with families uh, who have disabilities, and it's been, um, you know, that that's been a good thing for me because it does, um, you know, like like I said, I, I'm not doing counseling sessions with them, but hearing their stories and mm -hmm. um, and them seeing me in a, uh, you know, in a position of of uh, running an organization, a nonprofit, you know, it really does. Um, 
you know, inspire them. I've been told by, by them themselves and by, um, you know, their parents, like, oh, my, you know, my son really, <laughs> like, thinks it's cool that you're, you know, doing this all the time, and uh, we mm-hmm. run a baseball league, and, and just uh, organizing everything uh, <clears throat> to provide that uh, inspiration to the other, uh, other families, I think, uh, you know, I feel like I'm doing some type of counseling, and, and, you know, through that work. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, yeah, so, um, so can you just explain, um, what your what your job is and so um so i've been in private practice now for full time for eight or nine years um so probably about 10 i've had the practice um and i work primarily with women um who are going through life transitions um which you know i love when i start working with like my 20 something year olds and they're like this is so hard figuring out who you are and i'm like Buckle up, because this happens almost every decade of your life. Like, you think you're good, and then you're like, ooh, something don't fit here. Um, I'm like, there's this weird time frame in women's lives that they kind of settle for, like, it's chill. But, um, so, so definitely, you know, in going from that weird place of, like, I always say, I'm like, you're not a teenager anymore, but you're not an adult, and so you're like, what do I do? I'm like, don't worry, because your parents don't know how to react to you either, um, <laughs> because right. you're not a kid anymore, but you're not like a full adult, whatever that means. Uh-huh. But kind of that emerging adulthood error, um, and then like a lot of my other clients are in that state where they are now older, they're, they're transitioning out of their careers, their kids are grown up, like, and it's like, oh my gosh, I have to focus on me again, and I forgot how to do that, which I always get excited, because I'm like, yay, we get to explore what you like to do, right? Um, and remember how to take care of yourself, so, and in that, you know, I don't even throw it out there a lot, but the truth is, is I work a lot with trauma, um, mm-hmm. because Tons of people are walking around in this world and they, I find, don't always recognize the experiences that have really shaped their view of the world, which I think there's, we were talking about stigma before we started, um, and just not even the stigma around counseling itself, but the stigma around, like, the diagnosis of PTSD, Mm-hmm. I spend a lot of time educating people on the fact that, you know, you can have traumatic experiences and trauma responses without necessarily having a full diagnosis of PTSD. It's just as important because those experiences have really impacted the way you've kind of maneuvered through life and how you may be responding to life events now. Right. And that's always the piece that I emphasize when I'm working with people and I start to kind of see these things is let's talk about it, but in like not such a threatening way. Cause sometimes if there is something very specific, people think they have to tell their whole story. Right. And you don't have to like, that's the beauty of therapy is that it's your time. You do what you want with it. You know, I'm there just to kind of go for the ride with you, pull out a map, be like, hey, we can go this road or that road. But like, mm-hmm. ultimately, my client decides. Um, but it's always, that's always a big piece that I think as a whole, like the, the field sometimes focuses in a very clinical way. Mm-hmm. And I think that can be very threatening when you're the person living with trauma. Right. And I think it has to do with, I, I often hear, you know, oh, I don't want to tell people all my business and, you right. know, you know, statements like that. And it's just like, you tell them what you want them to know. <laughs> right. You know? I mean, like I always say, I'm like, listen, you're going to get what you, you put into this, but mm-hmm. that doesn't mean, you know, you have to sit there and give me like an autobiography. Right. I'll ask you questions when I need to know something or right. I'm just like, wait a minute, how'd that happen? Right. Like, yeah. like, I'm like, I always tell people, I'm like, I'm good, but I'm not a mind reader. Like, right. <laughs> but then I gotta it, ask you a question. <laughs> yeah, but then it goes back to, you know, the the 
therapist, the counselor being able to relate to the person, the individual. And then you just naturally, as the client, you just naturally start opening up and you're just like, oh shit, like, how, why did I say that? Like, yeah. <laughs> like word vomit. Oh my God. I didn't yeah, even I was, tell you all that. It's right. Like, I was supposed uh, to keep that one yeah. to myself, but. <laughs> yeah. That, I think that's like, so my first session with people, I, you know, I always tell them, I'm like, listen, I'm like, that first session is for us to get to know one another. I'm like, it's just as important for you to kind of get to like, a feel for me as mm-hmm. I am to listen to you and see like if I feel comfortable or um, confident really in helping you reach your goals and it's more about the client being comfortable and you know I check in at the end and it's, it's I've had people laugh at me all the time I'm like how was this for you today and they're like oh my god it was good I didn't expect to tell you all that stuff and I'm right. like well you know I really appreciate that you did and that's great that you felt comfortable enough to and then I always go to my next question. I'm like, well, I have one more question for you. And they're like, what? I'm like, I always used to say, would you like to come back? But, you know, telehealth, I'm like, you want to do this again? Um, and they're always like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, just checking. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not going to assume you want to do it again, even though it felt good. Like, you might be right. like, oh, I'm done with this. Like, that, right. was, that was a big 60, yeah. 75 minutes there, Tara. <laughs> right. Yeah, it was a one and done kind of thing. Like, just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like word vomit I'm out (laughs) right (laughs) I got it out I feel better and I'm done (laughs) but yeah it's really um it it is it's really like you said um you know with counseling you 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 get what you give kind of thing you know what you put into it is what you get out of it and uh the more open uh that you can be you know the better the better that you know you're you're able to uh you know work together and it's it's not a you know, it's not that you as the, uh, as the counselor have all the answers. It's just, you know, you work together and, you know, come up with, uh, you know, a plan and, and, and just figure out, you know, you figure out things together. So that's, um, you know, that's what I really liked about it. Cause it wasn't like, uh, you know, it wasn't like my counselor had all the answers for me. He helped, he helped me realize what, what I needed to do and just, mm-hmm. um, you know, brought it out of me. So it, it really, um, Absolutely. And I think the trick is that I, what a lot of people miss sometimes is it's okay to shop around mm-hmm. to find your person. Like you really want to make sure that you click with that person. I use this analogy with a lot of the females I work with when they call, I'm like, listen, you want to make sure that I fit like a good pair of black heels that you don't want to give up. <laughs> you know, the ones that you fill in with a Sharpie marker when they start to get worn out <laughs> and I've definitely had a few of my clients over the time been like, you are my black pump. I'm like, okay, that's, <laughs> that's nice. Like you can put me in the closet and if you need me like in a couple of years, you can call school. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. And that was, that, and that was the exact thing with uh, the counselor I was seeing. I was seeing him, uh, like I said, more, you know, consistently at first and then I mm-hmm. backed off and then, you know, some crazy stuff would be going on. And I'm like, Hey, uh, <laughs> yeah I just need a tune up right I think I might need to come in (laughs) right and that's the thing is like looking at counseling more so as you know it's wild um I is that we look at things like getting a massage um Mm -hmm. you know for for females I don't know why but we believe manis and pedicures are definite self-care needs um (laughs) if you ask me dyeing my hair a funky color is a self-care need but um (laughs) But the truth is, is like, there used to be this, you have to have something quote unquote wrong with you Mm -hmm. um, to go to counseling. And really, I don't know, I look at counseling as more of a self care. So it's like, if I'm going to spend a hundred and, you know, Lord knows I've spent a lot of money at a spa, $150 on like a massage and a facial at the spa once a month, why am I not willing to spend that once a month or every other month for like a tune up to go sit with somebody who doesn't have a personal opinion about me, mm-hmm. who isn't going to tell me necessarily I should do this or I should do that, but throw some options towards me to look at for myself. You know, they don't, the thing I always say to people is I'm like, 
I'm not family. Like, I don't have a personal investment in where you go. I care. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to be, I'm going to feel for you if something doesn't go well, but it's like, I'm also here for you to explore all your options that together we can kind of see. Um, and that's just, it's moving counseling away from, someone's going to get mad at me for saying this, from treatment <laughs> mm-hmm. into like a self-care practice. Yes. Yeah. And there's definitely the place for it to be treatment, but more so there's a place for it to be self-care, especially in the times that we're living right now. Yeah. And that's, um, I love what you said about, you know, you're not family and, you know, that, that's the thing, a, a lot of people and myself included, you know, we turn to our family and friends for advice a lot of times and to help us get through things. And sometimes it's like that, that that's great. And it's great to have that, that um, immediate support system. Um, but sometimes I love going to my counselor because he, he didn't know me. He didn't know the people I was talking about. And he could really just tell me like, uh, yeah, you're being a jerk. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's not telling me what I want to hear. And, you know, it's like, yeah, it's hard. It's rough. And you'll get through it. But, you know, like you need to, you know, you need to look at yourself too. Because not everybody else is being the, you know, mm-hmm. the pain in the ass. Like you're a little bit too. <laughs> so. Yep. Nope. My, my therapist is very good looking at me going, and what are you going to do about that? And I'm like, what? What right. do you mean? <laughs> I mean, I can't just ignore that. I'm like, oh, okay. And then I'm like, "Mm, this is karma for every moment that I look at a client, I go, and how'd that work out for you? (laughs) I'm like, okay. It's like, what do you mean? What is my role in in this situation? I don't have one. (laughs) I'm just watching. (laughs) Right. I don't have a role in that situation. It has nothing to do with me. (laughs) Like, all right, I guess I actively participated in this. Right. (laughs) But it's like, you know, for me, I needed that because, you know, your family and friends, you know, will tell you, oh, yeah, well, you know, you just have to, and they'll sugarcoat stuff for you. And, you know, I needed that kick in the behind to say, like, uh, no, like, you get it together, too. <laughs> right. Yep. So, it, it, and, and going back to what you said about the, um, you know, about it being self-care, it's so true. I, um, one of the things I do for self-care, I do the sensory deprivation floats. Oh, I um, love it. I love it. And, you know, so what, what the price of, of that every month is, um, you know, my friend who I go with, um, she was just like, look, you wouldn't think of, you wouldn't think twice about, you know, spending that amount of money on a dinner or, you know, she knows I love tequila. Mm -hmm. She's like, or a good bottle of tequila. (laughs) You wouldn't think twice about, right. You wouldn't think twice about dropping that money on that. So why not put it in yourself in a positive way? And, you know, and you know, it helps you. It helps relieve the the pain in in my knees and my back and my shoulders. She's like, you see the benefits of it immediately. Like, what do you, like, why would you think twice about, you know, doing something like that? Like you just just Mm -hmm. do it. (laughs) Yep. Absolutely. Yep. I mean, that's, I I sometimes put stuff in perspective. I'm like, you spent $250 to see Eddie Vedder solo once. You could spend that on anything else. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Oh, right. I did that. Yeah. So, but I mean, but this is the thing too, like self-care doesn't have to be extraordinary. Right? Exactly. Like, I mean, so like concerts to me is self-care. Like it's, it rejuvenates me. Um, I you know, agree but, with you 100%. <laughs> yeah. But then like going and doing, I always joke, I'm like going and doing the more bougie things like a float tank um, yeah. or a salt cave or yes. a day at like, um, in Jersey, there's the, there's a banya, um, yes. there's a Russian banya, there's a couple of Russian banyas in this state, That's yes. interesting, actually, I've heard about, about them, but, <laughs> yes, so, like, you know, it doesn't always have to be extraordinary, and I think that's a really big thing for people to also realize, is, like, it doesn't have to be those big ticket items, it doesn't even have to be something that costs anything, like, right. self-care can literally be, the fact that I've decided I'm going to take a bath tonight mm-hmm. and turn off my phone. Sometimes it's just turning off the phone is the self-care. Um, sometimes it's, I, 
I joke with clients all the time. They're like, oh, I got one of those adult coloring books. I was like, that's cool. I'm like, I got a minion one because the adult ones drive me freaking nuts. <laughs> like, and the best is, is like my mom got me one with all profanity because I'm a true Jersey girl and I curse yes. up a storm, right? <laughs> but I'm like, this is fucking hard. I can't do this. <laughs> So minions it is for me. Um, but sometimes it's just taking that break and doing that, you know, or like when my head's whirling around and I can't get the thoughts out, grab a piece of paper and just jot stuff down so that it's like, I call it thought dumping all the time. I'm like, uh-huh. I just dump all my thoughts on the paper and get rid of it. Um, but, you know, go for a walk. Know when you need a five minute break. It's setting boundaries. That's another big self care that, People don't recognize as self-care is knowing when you need to say no. Yes. And and doing that for real. (laughs) Yes. That's so true. And, and like you said, you know, we, we think of, you know, your first thought when you hear of self-care, you think about the spa and the massages and all the things that, you know, cost a little bit of money. And it's just like, no, it, it is sometimes like not turning on the TV and, you know, listening to an audio book. That's what I've done so many times. Um, That's what I've done so many times, like through the last, you know, seven or eight months, however long we've been in uh, this pandemic situation. I've just, I've not turned on my TV all day and just listened to an audio book for five or six hours and just, Mm -hmm. um, you know, and and wrote in my journal and and just looked at old uh, journal entries and, and organized them into like different sections and just uh, you know, stepping away. And like you said, knowing when to take a break and just getting outside and, and sitting or, or just going to sit by the, I live near a river and just going to sit by the river and just getting some fresh air. Like that yep. is, um, you know, that's definitely a self-care uh, technique and, and doesn't cost anything just to yep. <laughs> go down. No, the absolutely. And... I mean, there's a reason that I moved to the shore is yes. that, you know, the ocean calms me. So my biggest thing through this pandemic, it's funny. So I've lived at my house for four years. I never saw the sunrise until last Christmas. Um, I actually walked out there on Christmas to watch the sunrise over the ocean. And then through this pandemic, I think I've gone like three or four times in the morning, just take a cup of coffee and I go sit on the seawall and watch like the sunrise. I always catch the sunset. So I live between ocean and a river. Um, So the sun sets on the river. And so I always not always, but at least a few times a week, I walk out there to catch that um, yeah. <laughs> and stare at this sailboat that's been in the river the entire pandemic. So I'm pretty sure that guy's living there now. Good for him. <laughs> <laughs> Little jealous. And I'm like, does Uber Eats deliver to you? How do you eat? <laughs> right. <laughs> does Uber Eats have jet skis now? Or like, yeah. how that work? <laughs> I volunteer to paddle that out there for you if you'd like, but... <laughs> Yeah, it's really, um, wow, that, that's so great about the, uh, you know, the sunrise. It's, um, and the water, water calms me as well. Like, I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll text my mom sometimes, like, hey, I'm just riding to Ocean City. Like, I'm not even planning to get out of my car. I'm just going to, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to go and, and sit for a few hours. Or um, there's, um, in Ocean City, there's a, a, a gazebo uh that I, I found, uh, somebody told me about it and it's always, um, empty. So I, I go there and, oh. and I've been there a few times. Uh, I think I went two or three times this summer and just went and like I said, I took, mm-hmm. um, I have audio books and I, you know, put my headphones in and just sat there. Yeah. No. You know, for I a mean, few and hours that's and... it. That's self care, right? Is like mm-hmm. you have your spot. Yep. Yeah. And I text, you know, text a few people who I hear from every day, like, Hey, like everything's great, just going to Ocean City, you know, text mm-hmm. me if you need anything. Otherwise, I'll text you when I get home. <laughs> like everything is great. But uh, yeah, I really, uh, really appreciate this uh, conversation with you. It's just really, I think it's so important and not just like my, my podcast focuses on people with disabilities. And um, but I, I wanted to, you know, just broaden this topic a little bit just to you know, include everybody just to say like, you know, hey, it's it's good for everybody. Self-care is good and important for everybody. Um, you know, we're, uh, you know, all going through this uh, pandemic together, but it's impacting mm-hmm. us all in different ways. 
and just to, um, you know, remember the importance of self-care and, you know, if you, you know, if you do need to see a counselor, just, um, you know, make sure you do that because there's nothing wrong with it. And uh, it's very important that, you know, that we all take care of ourselves and just, um, you know, just, just make it through every day, you know, one day at a time kind of thing. And just, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, and especially through this pandemic, um, I've had this conversation frequently is, you know, I've had people, friends, clients, myself at times be like, why can't I just handle the normal day-to-day stuff right now? I'm losing it. And I'm like, cause you're in a pandemic. Right. Like, even though we've been doing this for eight months, we're all continuously living under technically life-threatening situations. That's right. a crisis right there. Yeah. So, you know, your tolerance for the everyday bullshit mm-hmm. goes out the window sometimes. And yeah. some days are going to be really, really hard. Other days it's going to feel like there's not a pandemic. And then there's the days that you're just like, I just can't even. Yeah. And it's okay. You know, I think self-compassion is a big piece of knowing how to care for yourself. And, Mm -hmm. you know, as we enter what unfortunately looks like possibly a second wave, um, Mm -hmm. especially in our area. Yes. (laughs) I think it's important to make sure that we acknowledge it. Like stop, feel the feelings, because if you just try to ignore them, they just build up in there. And yeah, and then that's not good. <laughs> no, no one wants to be like a pressure cooker that hasn't been like released some of the pressure because yeah. then it just burst open. And if you're me, you have spare ribs all over your counter. Um, oh. <laughs> the dog's happy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> whoop. <laughs> but that's, um, I, I think what you just said is really important. It's something that I, you know, I like to tell my friends when, you know, when they're dealing with things, it's like, you're feeling these, these emotions and it's okay. Like it's okay. Whatever it is, if you're happy, if you're sad, if you're angry, pissed off, whatever, like, it's fine. Like you're allowed to. (laughs) I say it all the time. I'm like, you got to feel it in order to heal it. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, uh, you got to feel it to heal it. Yeah. And it's so important because we, you know, we try to, sometimes I think people, um, you know, myself included, it's, you know, you feel an emotion and you're just like, no, no, it's not, you know, I shouldn't feel this way. And it's like, yeah, you should like, and it's okay. You're allowed to. (laughs) I mean, and yeah. So the mindfulness in me wants to like, you know, and the CBT in me wants to be like, like, no shoulds, right? Like (laughs) when people are like, oh, I shouldn't feel this way. I'm like, it's a feeling like it's not going to make sense. It's just going to happen. And if you just accept that it's going to happen, it will just kind of work its way through right (laughs) the idea like not a should or a shouldn't it's just it is it is yeah it really is (laughs) wow but um so thank you so so much for uh this conversation and just before we wrap up um if anybody is interested in contacting you about um sessions since you are doing uh virtual sessions right so Yep. Um, as long as you're in Jersey, I can do it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so if you're in Jersey, you can, um, you know, reach out to Tara and, um, you know, so just uh, provide any of your contact information. If you're on Facebook, Instagram, or other social media sites. Um, so I'm all over the place. Um, you can <laughs> definitely find me at my website, mindfulmomentsllc.com. Um, probably the easiest way to find me is on Instagram uh, at the rebellious therapist. Um, and there's also a Facebook page if you look up mindful moments too. So, um, but yeah, other than that, I think that's all the places I'm at. (laughs) Great. (laughs) But, uh, thank you so, so much for this conversation. I will definitely, um, you know, be reaching out to you again for, uh, some other topics that I, I would like to Anytime, my dear. This is so much fun. I love it. It (laughs) it is. Yeah. We, um, you know, I'm, I'm starting um, looking into uh, topics for, for the new year. So, um, and some of them are um, mental health related. So, um, you know, I would love to have you join in on some more, uh, some more conversations with some other guests and things like that. So, but good. <laughs> yeah, but thank you so, so much. Enjoy your Friday and your weekend. <laughs> thank you. I'm uh, going to get myself ready for work.
question. (laughs) (laughs) But you have a good day and I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks. All right. Thank you. (laughs) Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Well, um, so to get this going, I want to welcome my guest to the podcast, Mrs. Keisha (laughs) Butler-Thomas. Hello. Hello. Thank you for joining me today. Um, Full disclosure, Keisha is my cousin. We... (laughs) We have known each other uh, our whole lives, and um, you know I've I've really wanted to have you on the podcast uh, for a few reasons because you've always been uh, so supportive of me, and even in starting my podcast, I've had um, a few guests on already um, because of you and your uh, connections that you've made for me. So I appreciate that, and thank you for that. Again, I know I've told you before, but yeah. thanks again. And uh, you still have uh, a few people that I have to reach out to for uh, some new episodes in 2021. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Uh, So I appreciate the whole networking connection that we've been doing. And um, I'm excited to have you on today uh, for this episode. Um, Excuse me. In my intro uh, to this episode, I mentioned um, what, what a year 2020 has been for all of us, really. Uh, presenting yes. the new, um, presenting such new challenges that nobody has seen before, you know, people our age, people younger than us, people older than us. Uh, 2020 has just been a real big um, ball of unexpected <laughs> uh, <laughs> things. And it, it's it's really thrown a lot of people, um, you know, for for a real loop and, and not really knowing how to um, manage some new stress that has um, come along and anxieties and, uh, you know, has triggered some depression for uh, some people within and outside of the disability community. So I wanted to use this last episode of the year for my podcast to address um, just some um, topics related to mental health and topics related to uh, self-care and ways that people can um, potentially um, help manage their uh, stressors that, that occur. And just to, you know, end this year on a somewhat high note to start 2021 with uh, a a fresh slate, as they say. And uh, yes. So, um, so I'm I'm honored again to have you on and I would just like for you to introduce yourself to, um, to my listeners and tell them who is Keisha Butler Thomas. Well, thank you um, again for including me in this. Uh, Much to your point, I was really excited um, when you decided to start this um, because, as you mentioned, full disclosure, we are family. Um, And so I have had the privilege of knowing a member of the disability community my entire life. And so for me, it's never been different. It's just been Arthur. And so I was so excited when you decided to create this platform to be able to allow other people to see just how regular and normal, for lack of a better term, your life really is. You know, there's not much difference except for the fact that you got a couple wheels that some of the rest of us don't have. And so with that, I was super excited to be able to support that in any way. So yes, you've said thank you a million times and you're welcome a million times. Um, And I will continue to scout talent for you (laughs) as I'm moving around in my network. So Keisha Butler Thomas is loaded, but uh, first and foremost, the owner of Purposeful Life Solution Focused Life Coaching where we specialize in helping the every woman to stop surviving and start thriving. In addition to that, I am also the host of my very own talk show uh, on RBN TV called Stop Surviving, Start Thriving with Life Coach Keish, um, as well as I am very much um, involved in the diversity and inclusion space, um, volunteering on various uh, boards and sitting on various committees and what have you. In addition to that, I am a wife and a dog mother. Um, Full disclosure, I'm sorry if anybody hears the dog throughout this time as we are still in this pandemic, we are still working from home. And so we are hearing things and seeing things that are not typical. So I want to make sure that we are very clear about that um, as well. But overall, um, I am just a change agent. I think when people ask who Keisha Butler Thomas is, change agent, 
um, really comes to mind because it is my true passion and purpose in life to help other individuals evoke the changes in their lives that they feel are going to help them live the most full life they could possibly live. That's awesome. I love the uh, change agent. I think that is um, so you, like you said, you know, like we've both said, we've known each other our whole lives. And I think um, you going into the uh, world of life coaching, I think is a very great fit for you. You always have uh, great advice and great um, solutions for, uh, for people. I, I know we've had conversations and you know, without even realizing it, probably you've helped me, uh, you know, jumpstart some things for, for myself. So, uh, you know, I appreciate that as well. Can you get into a little bit of how you, um, how you became interested in becoming a life coach and what that process, uh, was like for you? Absolutely. So I actually, um, it's funny when I think over my life, I realized that there has been little nuggets of my purpose throughout the way. Um, but I think that it truly revealed itself uh, five years ago when my father suddenly passed away. Um, he was 52 years old with no pre-existing conditions um, and just went on to glory. And so that was really difficult for me to process um, because I think usually when we are dealing with um, a loss, Typically, there is something that happens prior to the loss that helps it make a little bit more sense. Perhaps the person was ill, older, something like that. So we're able to kind of rationalize it a little bit better. For me, with him being 52 and with no pre-existing conditions, I found that it was very, very difficult for me to process. In addition to that, I'm an only child of two only children. And so losing him was literally losing a third of my family. I wasn't married at the time. Um, so, you know, it was, a, a, it was devastating as it is devastating for anyone who loses someone close to them, but it was truly devastating. And so I spent about a year, uh, after his death, just trying to figure it out on my own. And then I quickly realized, um, that I needed some help to figure it out and to sort it out. And so initially I had gotten a grief counselor and about six months into that, my grief counselor was like, Hey, listen, you're great and everything, but you don't need me. Um, however, if you want some additional accountability or something like that, have you thought about maybe seeking a life coach? And at that time, I, the only life coach I knew was like Iyana Van Zandt on the OWN network. Like I didn't know like any other ones. So I'm like, okay. Uh, so I found myself a life coach about three months into working with her. She goes, Hey, listen, you're great, but you don't need me. You need to be teaching these methods to other people because you get this, you understand this. And that's what people truly need in their coach. They need someone who understands it and gets it. And you do that. And so it was funny because all throughout, I was, there was different transitions in my career. And to many people, I was successful um, by their standards, right? Like I owned other, other companies where I was doing very well financially, but there was always something missing. I just couldn't quite figure out what it was. And it was through these two coaching experiences that I had that really propelled me into launching my practice myself. Yeah, I think that's, um, I think that's so important. Um, you know, unfortunately, it's a club that nobody wants to belong to, the club of losing a parent. You know, like you said, it that does something to you for sure. It really, um, you know, I, ha I have a, a larger family. I'm, I have a few siblings and, um, you know, but it impacts everybody differently. It's really something where you can, um, when you can find, you know, that life coach or that counselor that uh, you can connect to and, um, you know, really help you find your purpose and help you figure out uh, some things in your, in your own life. So I really think that it's really, uh, you know, it's very important that, you know, when you're seeking someone uh, as a life coach uh, or a counselor that, you know, you find somebody that you can connect to. For sure, for sure. And, and I often tell people, there's a lot of coaches out here, right? Like, mm -hmm. there, there's truly a lot of us the only reason why you're going to want to work with me is if you can relate to me. And for a long time, people, you know, people always ask the question, well, what makes you different? What makes you more relatable to me than someone else? And so 
I had thought about that for a long time. And it was actually my husband who said, I think what you need to tell people is, if they have an appreciation for both Oprah Winfrey and Cardi B, then you are the life coach for them because you are a cross between the two. And when I really thought about that, I said, you know what? You're right. And that is truly my audience. Those women who can appreciate a little Oprah and a little Cardi. And they are two women who have very distinct personalities. And I can absolutely agree with your husband. That is, <laughs> that is definitely you. <laughs> You say those two names and you know exactly their personalities. Like and that is right. <laughs> Oh wow, that is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. So but I but I mean, to your point, you have to find someone who you can relate to. Because right. there's a ton of people we can talk to. That that's just the truth. But it's about finding someone who you feel like you connect with on a deeper level to really be able to do the work or the good work that's necessary for you to move forward in life. Right. Yeah. I know. Um, in, uh, in part of your introduction, you, um, mentioned that your uh, clients are women. Um, what, um, what made you decide to, uh, just work with women or is, is there a specific reason why or, or not, or, um, so yes, yes, there's a very specific reason why. Um, and so I, I work with women because <clears throat> I do believe again, to, to my last point, you have to have someone whom you relate to. Now, that's not to say that there aren't men who relate to me. And if there are men who relate to me and they reach out to me um, for services or my programming, I do work with them. Mm -hmm. I just don't cater to them only because I want to make sure that I'm truly completely invested and relatable to my client. And so I do that best with women between the ages of 25 and 45. And so that's where my messaging and branding is targeted because I know those are my people. That's my tribe. Right. But we all have a few people in our tribe who don't necessarily look like or seem like they should be a part of our tribe, but they are. And so that's where men really fit into uh, my business. So they are there. Don't get me wrong, but that's not who the branding is targeted for. Okay, great. Yeah, that's good to know. Cause I, I, I figured that about you, but I, I you know, I wanted to make sure that uh, you were able to talk about that and clarify that, which is, you know, it makes complete sense. Uh, you know, again, like, like you said, there are people within our tribe that uh, don't necessarily look like us or seem like they would identify with us and they actually, you know, identify with us very well. Like my counselor that I mentioned, he was probably in his 50s or 60s at the time and, um, you know, and he was Caucasian. So it's just like, yeah, he looks the complete opposite of me, but we, <laughs> you know, somehow we, we made it a connection and, and we really, uh, you know, carried that on, that connection and, and that, those sessions for, you know, a few years, uh, less consistently as the years went on. But, um, you know, definitely uh, we, we carried those on for, uh, those sessions on for, for a long time, which were uh, very helpful. There, you know, there, there's a lot of talk about, um, you know, psychologists and counselors and life coaches and what the difference is between those um, professions. And uh, so can you get into a little bit about what are some of the things you're able to work on uh, with your clients, what it is your, your specialty is and, and what things you can uh, focus on and work with on with your clients? Sure. So the biggest difference between a coach and a therapist really comes down to, I, I'll say two main things. Number one, I don't diagnose. So if anybody goes to a life coach and they're handing out diagnosis, run the other way, because that is not what we are licensed to do. And so I want to be very clear about that. Step two for us um, with with coaches, or excuse me, with therapists, they are usually mainly focusing on mental health and emotional healing. And so, <clears throat> although some of that ties into coaching, what I do for the most part is focus on 
goal achievement and accountability. And so life coaches can almost be thought of as an accountability partner because what we do is help you work through specific situations in a goal-oriented way. Um, and I think that's very important for people to know because oftentimes when we go to a therapist, um, which my grief counselor was a therapist, so oftentimes when we go to a therapist, they're doing a lot of listening, we're doing a lot of talking. There may not be necessarily a set goal or time frame by which we're trying to achieve something. However, with a coach, there usually is, which is why, for, for example, with my programming at Purposeful Life, we have a month program, a quarterly program, and a six-month program. We set up the goals that we're looking to achieve in those specific times, and we work specifically towards those goals. Of course, there is a lot of listening on my end and talking on my client's end. However, it's usually centered around that particular goal, which is why a lot of the people who I work with are in transition in some way. So they're either unhappy or unfulfilled in some aspect of their life, may that be personal or business. And we're working towards trying to fill in those gaps or achieve the next level of success. Great. And I think, um, you know, as we started off this conversation, um, mentioning 2020 and the um, great crap show that it has been um, <laughs> for a lot of people, I think, uh, you know, having an opportunity to uh, reset and refocus and uh, look at your life, whether you, like you said, whether it's uh, personal or business wise, um, a lot of personal things and business things have uh, been turned upside down for people this year because of the pandemic. And as you mentioned, we, um, I've always worked from home, but you know, you're working from home now and um, a lot of people are working from home. A lot of people have lost their jobs and um, you know, a lot of other personal things have happened uh, to them and a lot of losses uh, have occurred for people. So I, I think, um, you know, it's really great uh, that you and other people that are doing this uh, life coaching uh, job and, and have taken this on are, uh, you know, going to be very beneficial to, uh, you know, people in the coming months and, and years uh, to help refocus them and get them back on track to achieve their uh, goals that they have set that may have, uh, been, you know, turned onto another track for a little bit because of uh, the way this year has been for, for a lot of them. Mm. So um, is, is there anything that, um, is there anything that you can uh, suggest for people, uh, something that they can like start on at home with uh, trying to refocus and uh, set goals for themselves and, and how they can begin that process if, um, you know, before, of course, before they reach out to you to help them along the way. <laughs> Is there something that they can do now uh, on their own, uh, you know, to help them uh, set, set, go, uh, keep going in that right, in that right direction? Absolutely. So my biggest tool um, that I use with all of my clients is journaling. So Oftentimes, um, it is so beneficial to be able to get our thoughts out in a very clear and concise way. Um, and I know sometimes people feel like journaling, <clears throat> you know, that feels like something you do as a teenager, but journaling with a purpose is so, so beneficial to our thought patterns and being able to organize ourselves. <clears throat> now, of course, people can use, excuse me, any sort of journal, notebook, whatever it is that works for them. At Purposeful Life, we do have the Purpose Planner. I specifically designed this planner, it's quarterly, to help people be able to organize their days. And so I wanna share with you some of the main things that we put in here, because I think that they're very important for people at home to be able to utilize uh, while they're you know, trying to get their thoughts together and figure out what's gonna be their next step. So. First and foremost, um, there's a space for affirmation. I believe that every single day we need to be practicing positive self-talk. And the easiest way to do that is through providing ourselves with a daily affirmation. 
In addition to that, there is a space for you to write what you're grateful for. Oftentimes with everything that's going on right now and everything that's happened in 2020, the waters can get very murky. We can forget that through all of this chaos, there are still blessings that are occurring every day for us in some way, shape, or form. Just waking up, opening our eyes, putting our feet on the ground. Those are things that we need to continue to be grateful for. Um, and I know <clears throat> people, excuse me, always say, well, things are just really, really bad. And I get that. But note that we're all in the same storm, but each of us are in a different boat. And we have to be thankful for whatever boat we are in in that storm. And so that's really where the, the grateful piece comes from. There's then some area to journal as well as on the opposite page, there's journal space for you to just kind of get your thoughts out for the day. We Additionally, there is an area for opportunity. That's an area during the day where you say to yourself, mm, I could have done that differently. Maybe you engage in a conversation with someone and you recognize that old adage, it's not what you say, it's how you say it, and you didn't say it so good. Maybe that's your area of opportunity for the day. Um, or perhaps that particular day, you just couldn't think of anything to be grateful for. Maybe that's your opportunity for the next day. And last but not least, your win for the day. So if you are a person who lost your job through this and you're looking for a new opportunity and you send out five resumes that day, that's a win because yeah. now you're five <laughs> resumes closer to potentially obtaining a new position. And so this goes on every single day. And it's purposeful uh, in, in this way because I do think that after we do this for long enough, we start to recognize that there is some good going on. There's some areas that we need to improve on, but there is some good that's happening. This is particularly done quarterly just because it's beneficial to my business clients as well as my personal clients because we usually measure our successes on a quarterly basis. It tends to be very helpful in the business community. Um, <clears throat> and my, my clients who are with me uh, from a personal standpoint, they really enjoy this because a lot of times it's in addition to their calendars. It kind of mm -hmm. helps them um, stay focused. So uh, again, you can use any kind of journal you want to, um, but the purpose planner is specifically laid out in that way so that you are not forgetting some of those key things that you should be noting uh, on, on a daily basis. That's so great and so important. Um, you know, we've been, uh, sheltering in place in New Jersey since March or April or whenever it was. Um, yes. We're recording this in early November. And um, I just found a 30-day um, a of gratitude um, calendar that I'm using for November. And every day it tells you um, something to write down. At, it gives you a topic to write down at, uh, what you're mm -hmm. thankful for. And um, at the beginning of this whole sheltering in place, I was looking through um, some old journals. I started journaling when I was a teenager, <laughs> um, you know, and I'll be, um, by the time this episode airs, I'll be 39. But I, I went through and I was able to, you know, look at things that I was writing down. And it, to me, like it, it really spoke to me when you said like our self-talk. And some of the things I was saying when I was younger about myself and, you know, how I felt about certain things and, um, you know, just having a disability and, and how it just wasn't, um, wasn't fun sometimes. It's still not. Uh, but then I, I noticed how uh, the self, the self talk started to change. And, um, you know, I can remember cause I wrote down like specific things that were happening at that time. And, um, you know, just, noticing how my self-talk changed and how that helped me respond better to situations that weren't always um, favorable to me, um, you know, really made a, a huge difference. So I am a great, um, I am a great believer in journaling and self-talk and, and um, gratitude journals and, and uh, affirmations and things like that. So that's really, uh, really great that you, that you mentioned that. <laughs> Yes, positive self-talk is so super important. Um, I preach this to my clients um, and the, the private communities that I have on Facebook all the time. It is so crucial for us to be feeding ourselves positivity. 
Um, the moment that we start to speak negativity over our lives is the moment in which we start to decline. Um, it's very important that if nothing else, we build up a self-confidence and self-esteem that promotes positivity. Yeah, that's so true. And, um, you know, again, I, um, my podcast is primarily focusing on um, disabilities and uh, people with disabilities, but this episode especially, um, you know, it, I'm hoping that people get something from all of the episodes that I've had, uh, whether they have a disability or not. And this episode uh, as well, I, you know, I wanted to make sure that I didn't just narrow it down to people that had disabilities for this conversation, just because, um, you know, we all can use uh, some positive affirmations and self-talk and, and all of uh, all of the things that you mentioned. So I, um, you know, I really wanted to, uh, you know, make sure that I included um, you and the others who are participating in this episode, uh, you know, in this conversation, because it is so important and valuable to everybody who will hear this uh, you know, just to try to stay positive and um, focus on, like you said, something every day that you're grateful for or something good that happened because there are good things that happen in every day, uh, no matter what, you know, the overall day might look like. There are some uh, big things, as you said, even if it's just, you know, sending out five resumes, uh, you know, it's, that's a great thing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I do just want to mention to uh, our brothers and sisters in the disability community, self-talk is even more important there, right? Some of the adversities and the hurdles that our brothers and sisters in the disability community face, those of us who are able-bodied could never, ever understand. There are basic everyday things that I know for sure you do differently than I do. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it poses difficulty for you sometimes, contingent upon what it is that you need to do. And so I can't imagine just the level of frustration um, and the, the level of negative talk that could creep in because of that. Right. And so positive self-talk is even more critical um, for our brothers and sisters there so that they can continue to understand that disability does not mean disabled. It does not mean unable to achieve, to be, to grow, to glow. And so I really want to make sure that our brothers and sisters in that community are exercising some of these tools because I, I'm so certain that there are things that a, a, an able-bodied person like myself could just never understand. Yeah, that is so, so important. And that was the one of the main goals in creating this, um, my Our View company in general, and specifically this podcast, is to show what you just said, that, you know, people who have disabilities, you know, are able to do a lot of things. They do a lot of things. They are active and successful and, um, you know, all, all of those things. Like, it, it's really, uh, really important that I, you know, was sharing uh, stories of others who have disabilities and uh, giving an insight to what they're able to do and, and how they are able to achieve their goals and they have goals. And, uh, you know, it's so, so, so cool that, uh, you know, we're having this conversation and saying very similar things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, my, my, my favorite story to tell um, is always when we go out together and you choose to drive. It's always yeah. so funny when we go out together and you're driving. And so, you know, you do everything on your own. And so for me, I'm super used to that, right? Like this is how I grew up. Like I know I what, what you do, right? Like right. you don't need my assistance, but it's always so funny when people who don't know you or don't know us, see us they're always giving me these glares like why isn't this woman helping him why isn't right. this woman putting his wheelchair together why would this woman let him drive and right. it's just always so funny because I have to remind myself like oh they don't they don't know, you know? Right. <laughs> but it's always hilarious uh because people really give me the death stare like oh yeah like I'm super insensitive and like rude. And I'm like, guys, if I try to help him, he's going to yell at me. Like I can't try to help. Like what is, what is going on here? It's the, 
it happens with everybody. And it's, the, I think it's the funniest when it happens when I'm out with my mom. And, you know, like we, <laughs> my mom and I look so much alike. So I'm pretty sure people are clear that like, okay, this is this woman's son. And she is just like standing there, letting him put his wheelchair together and like having a conversation or she's like, you know, on her way walking into the store or something and like left this guy here. Like what, like what is happening? And you know, my mom, sometimes she'll be like, he's fine. He's, he's good. He's fine. And that's, <laughs> and it's so funny because like you said, that's just, that's just how it's been. Um, you know, my parents and my family, they've just, um, they taught me how to be independent and almost like to a fault almost. Cause I'm just like, no, I'm good. I, you know, I look like I'm, you know, going to, I can get these bags up my steps, you know, no problem. And you know, it looks like I might fall over, but like, I got everything balanced. I'm actually okay. So <laughs> to be able to, um, to be able to use this platform of the podcast to give an insight into that, um, into my world and the world of others who live with disabilities has been really, uh, really fun so far and I'm really looking forward to uh 2021 with uh you know more more interviews and and more stories uh like this one <laughs> so funny <laughs> but um so but before we wrap up I would love I know you mentioned um the name of your company and your uh, new tv show um and uh can you just give people um uh Give people information about where they can find you online, social media, your website, um, where they can purchase the journal and your other merchandise, and um, information about where your TV show can be found. Absolutely. So uh, everything is at Life Coach Keish. That's K-E-S-H. So definitely follow along on Instagram. We have a great Instagram community and we put out a lot of great stuff every week, if I do say so myself. Uh, so you can find me on Instagram at Life Coach Quiche, as well as the website is www.lifecoachquiche.com. Our shop is there. You can get your purpose planners there, as well as some other mantra merchandise. Um, Twitter at Life Coach Quiche. Everything's at Life Coach Quiche. Um, <laughs> as far as the television show goes, uh, I'm on RBN TV Network, so the easiest way to watch the show is at rbntv.tv. There is a show page on there, Stop Surviving, Start Thriving with Life Coach Keish. You simply click on that. You can watch past episodes, um, as well as you can view the episodes live on Wednesday nights at 7.30 p.m. In addition to that, there is a link on my website that will take you to the show also. If that option does not work for you for some odd reason, um, you can find my show on the iFame app, which is available on Amazon Prime, Roku, and Apple TV. Um, so you just type in the iFame. Once that comes up, type in Stop Surviving, Start Thriving with Life Coach Quiche, and you can watch it there right in your homes. Awesome. I am... So happy that you uh, joined me for this conversation. I appreciate you and the knowledge that you brought to uh, this conversation. And uh, hopefully, you know, some of my listeners will reach out to you and, uh, you know, want to work with you. That is um, my goal here to uh, help promote uh, you and also and what you're, you know, what you're doing and just to, um, you know, give my listeners some hope at the end of this year and, um, you know, a, a good way to start off the new year with uh, some positivity and uh, some positive self-talk and affirmations and gratitude and just, um, you know, to keep hanging in there and that, you know, everything is um, working out for all of us and just to uh, continue to have hope. And uh, so I appreciate your insight into uh this conversation and thank you again so much and of course i will be talking to you and seeing you soon <laughs> well thank you so much again for giving me the opportunity to talk to your community um i'm truly truly humbled at any opportunity i get to be able to engage with with you and your community so thank you so much for having me and i hope that your viewers will take a little something from this segment Yes. So you are welcome. And um, I thank you and have a great day. <laughs> Talk to you soon. All right. Great. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Our View podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the Our View podcast on Anchor, 
Apple Podcasts, or Spotify. New episodes will be released on the 15th and 30th of every month. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Our View for Life. That's O-U-R-V-I-E-W, the number four, L-I-F-E. Do you want to help change the tone of conversation among your family and friends? Head over to our website for some Our View merchandise. Our website is www.our-view.com forward slash merchandise. I thank you for listening. Have a great day and take care.